In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to do an email broadcast using Infusionsoft. When you first log into Infusionsoft, you'll be brought to your dashboard. And what you'll want to do is hold your mouse over the Infusionsoft logo to expand the full menu. Under the marketing area, you'll pick broadcast. From here, you'll have several options of what type of broadcast you want to do. For this example, we're going to go ahead and click on email. If you previously started one but haven't finished it, you'll get this message asking you yes to continue or no to start from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and select no. Now we're going to be asked to select who will get the email. From this list, you'll also notice that yourself is already added because you are the creator. In the saved search box, you'll be able to find any saved contact lists that exist, and you can simply send the email to them just by clicking on the name. So if I were to choose newsletter.mlforck.com, it'll add them to the list of recipients. You can see how many people are on the list. You can even view the list if you want to look at the names by clicking the link, and then click back to broadcast to get back to where you were. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Assuming we wanted to send it to a different list, somebody that you didn't see, you would click on New Search. And from here, you can use several different methods to search. You can search on names, by tags, or any basically any field that is part of the contact record. So if you wanted to do a targeted list of phone numbers, for instance, that start with 619, by typing 619 in the first phone box and leaving it at Starts With and Searching, you should get a list of anybody in the 619 area code. If I were to click on this, it'll show that it's just me. And my phone number starts with 619. I'm going to click back to broadcast and remove this again and click on new search. Most times you're going to use a tag to do a search like this. So if I scroll down here to the subscriptions, you'll see that there's one called newsletter for healthy baby code. I'm going to click on that. If for some reason there was a list of people that I didn't want to get this email that might be part of that list, maybe I want to make it a narrower part of the healthy baby list, I could click on doesn't have any of these and choose another tag. If I don't want them to be buyers with the healthy baby code. And then I can click on search. And again, it's only going to show you one person because I'm the only person on the list right now. Assuming that this is how I want it to go out to the right people, I'm going to click on Next. And from here, I can go ahead and create an email by clicking on Email Body and just starting to type out my email. Or I can click Pick an Existing Email, and it's going to show me the 18 templates that are available right now. And I can type in Healthy to narrow down the search parameters to Healthy Baby Code. I can preview this by clicking on Preview. Make sure it's the right one. And then I'm going to select Use This. Now that I have the email in here, I have the option to change who it's going to be from, uh, to change my subject line, and to edit the body of my email. So I'm going to click on Edit. And this is only going to change the body for the instance that I'm using it. It does not affect the template, only the current use. And I'm going to get rid of all this and maybe say read this message. You can add in merge fields by clicking the merge button. So maybe I want it to actually say read this Michelle. Now if I click on preview, you'll see by adding that merge field that it Change it to read this, Michelle. You can also add in automated links. Now, if we were, for instance, saying read this, Michelle, and sending them to a Google page, if they clicked on that link to Google, all that would happen is they clicked on the link. What we might want to have happen is that we want them to be tagged so that we know what kind of activities they're taking part in. Uh, within our emails and also maybe I want to assign myself a task to call that person if they click on that link. So instead of just typing in the straight go to google.com, what I'm going to do is click on links and in the automation links section, 
I'm going to choose Google by inserting it. It looks kind of funny, it's just as a number and the name of the link, but when you preview it, it's just going to look like Google.com. The customer doesn't see anything unusual, but when they click on that, there's going to be activities happening in the background. They're going to tag that person as interested in Google and assign a task to myself to call them because maybe I want to offer them something special by phone. So if you were to look at the automation link by clicking on edit, you can see how this was created. I gave it a name. You have an option of sending them to a thank you page. So it could be something like you want to have a link that says, do you need more help? When they click on it, you could send them to a thank you page that says, thank you, we received your request for help. Somebody will contact you soon. That would be an instance of how you would use that. If you click on some other web page, that's where you get the chance to put in the google.com address. Then you type in the edit box, you just type what you want that to say. And I could have said, go to google.com and it'll link that whole field. I'm going to save it. And then in the actions, this is where all the kind of magic happens. Once you're in the actions, you can select an action from the list of apply a tag and pick any tag that would be applicable to what you're doing or create one if there isn't one. And that's how you get this Google tag. And then also an action for creating a task. There are task templates. You may have certain tasks that happen often. You might want to do that for, or you can actually create a task just by clicking the add button. And this is where you would give it a name and a title and what properties you want to have happen. So if we just take a look at the one that I already created, Google person, you can see that I gave it a title of call Google. Um, clicked This person clicked the Google, which is what I titled it, and then a note to myself, person was interested in Google follow up. So I know why I wanted to do this. I didn't assign it to the owner, I just assigned it to myself. Gave myself three days to process this task and called it a non-essential task. So now when somebody clicks on this link, the system's going to send me an email and let me know, and it's also going to assign a task to me and let me know that I have something to do. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and kind of close out of this box. Assuming that everything in your email is the way you wanted, it's all formatted the way you wanted, and you do have some options here. I noticed that read this message is formatted it one way, but my contact first name isn't, so I'm just going to go ahead and change that so that it all matches. So you are able to use the editor tools here to modify some of your email. I'm going to go ahead and preview it one more time. And see now it says go to Google because I made that save. I'm going to hit OK. Close this, which will save it. And now I want to send a test. I can send it to myself because I'm already there. Or I can select a different person by clicking on the link. And maybe I want to send my test to Chris. By clicking the send test button, it's actually going to send something. So I'm going to go ahead and change that back to my own name. Click send test, and you'll get the message here, email test sent successfully to Michelle. Assuming that I've looked it over and everything's okay, I'm going to hit the next button. I'm going to check my boxes. I have read and agreed to the acceptable use. I have permission to send these emails. I want them to be tracked. I can opt to send it right now or click this box and say send it on the 31st. I can even specify what time I want it to be sent. I can also decide if I want the completion notice sent out. It doesn't have to be. If the box is checked, it's going to send it to the person's name here. If I put a comma, I can also add another name or several other names. The last step that you have here is the Facebook and Twitter. If the account is linked to your Facebook and Twitter accounts and you check these boxes, the system will send the subject line of the email message being sent to Facebook and to Twitter, which is kind of a nice feature. I'm going to go ahead and click Done, and now I'm going to get my stats. It's going to tell me what's going on. It was created on this day. It's scheduled to start on the 31st, which is why you see it as queued but not started. It's scheduled to send two emails, 
it's going to skip one because they were both actually to my own email address. One as the person who created it and then one as the person on the list. The system will only send one email to a person at a time. So if I put my name on that list 200 times, it's only going to send it to me once. And then it also has your social, social reach area. So it's going to show you, if your analytics are hooked up, what your stats are. This information, for the most part, is also available on your dashboard. If you were to click Dashboard, your email stats box is going to show you what's going on. So it shows you the last thing that you sent, or you can go back and say today, which if I had sent more than one, it would compile them, the last seven days, and the last 30 days. It looks like a lot of emails, but it's really just a lot of test emails going out. You can also click on this broadcast button to see a complete list of broadcasts that have been sent. And that is pretty much how you manage an email broadcast.